everybody, welcome back to another episode of Card Talk, a podcast where we spend a little bit of time talking about cards from Lord of the Rings, the card game. I'm your host, Dave Walsh. And I'm Grant Thompson, just along for the ride. <laughs> and today we're back with a playthrough for Journey Along the Anduin with our Slippery Sylvan deck. Um, we're trying to show people how the Slippery Sylvan deck works. Plus, I think we... Um, are just I just decided to try to do a one deck run with um, with this. So uh, this is our first attempt at Journey Along the Anduin. And Grant, why don't you tell us a little bit about what this quest is and what the what to look for here? Right. Well, unlike Pathos Room Workwood, this one's difficulty ramps fairly significantly. Um, the story behind this is the continuation of delivering the message from Thranduil to the Lady Galadriel. But on setup, you start revealing um, cards equal to the number of players in the game from the encounter deck. And then, obviously, once David's finished shuffling, he'll um, reveal, um, well, you need to do your pl player hand first later and decide on whether you're keeping it or not. Right, for this hand, um, I always make it a point to try to find one of the th at least one of the three resource accelerators. So there's Olorien, Island of Mid Perils, another copy of Olorien, Orofin, the Galadon Archer, and Nenya. So I have two of the three, Olorien being one, Steward of Gondor being the second, and I call Nenya a resource accelerator, even though that's not really what she does. Because a resource um, smoother, basically. Yeah, it's a resource smoothing. So um, there's also Elven King, which is great to have in your hand. But um, so I'm going to keep this hand because um, um, there's no guarantee. Yeah, me personally, I probably wouldn't have kept that knowing what this scenario is going to throw out at work. But that's the difference between me and David. <laughs> right. Well, what what would you? Um, for me, I'd have. Hope to get something like Dane Voices um, and a few, um, maybe a copy of the Nath Guide um, and just some pretend, maybe a uh, Glad when we've got to recur that Dane Voices once you use it because obviously you know what yourself that we've got a hill troll that may come out, well, that is coming out, whether you draw it from the set up resolution set up portion or whether it's from the force effect of 1b and that troll can be nasty well and this and this goes to the game in general is that you know when you're playing these games you want to kind of have an idea if you're going to beat them you probably want to have an idea of what you're getting yourself into so it's hard to play these games blind now you and me and probably every other person doing lord of the rings um, the card game has played these core set things a million times. So it's not like any surprises are coming out for this, um, out of this encounter deck. But, you know, some of the more obscure quests, some of the print on demand, some of the, you know, some people don't have all the saga boxes, you know, like <laughs> you're just not familiar with what the deck is bringing you. So, I still think, I agree with what you're saying, but I think that in order to get this deck up and running, having the resource um, oh, yeah, is, I'm the not best, saying it's not, is the best I'm, thing to go with. Yeah, I'm not saying it's not. It's just that, that second copy of All Orient, I think I would have preferred something like Feigned Voices. Right. Well, one of the things that we, one of the original copies of this deck had Protector of Lorien in it, where you could sacrifice stuff and increase your threat and, or increase your willpower and defense if you wanted to. So, I mean, that's an option for people running this deck is to always have those uh, cards in there. But yeah. Um, anyway, so my, my heroes that we're starting with is there. We have Thranduil, Galadriel, and Celeborn. Um, Which starts you off with 29 threat. 29 threat. Um, we always have um, Albert Einstein with us as the rules adjudicator. He's my like good luck charm play in this. Um, and then we have the round counter here. Um, that's it. And my dice. I, I'm a dice guy and not a token guy. So 
that's what's going on. Okay, so one of the things that I wanted to say about this, I don't know how it worked with you, Grant, but when I first did this, I would always just put a hill troll out into the into the staging area because 1B says find the hill troll. But <laughs> if you reveal the hill troll here, you don't have to go find it. So it's that always... Was, go ahead. That was exactly the case. If uh, I always... Um, Reveal the one or two cards first, um, before prior to having the hill troll out, because I was always hoping that one of the cards revealed would be a hill troll. Obviously, you know yourself from um, numerous episodes. I'm not a solo player. I'm a multiplayer type of guy. I love two player. Um, it the difficulty is scaled equal i would say relatively speaking for two-handed or two-player gameplay and then it scales relatively harder as you get more players in i think two player is the sweet spot for most quests to deal with ni nicely <laughs> yeah 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 i think that and and Caleb, who we've had on the show, I mean, he playtests all these quests himself too. So you know that it's it's always a high quality thing. So oh, definitely, I've never seen a too terrible a quest come from um, right. FFG. I may have seen some disastrous quests for the players, but I've never seen a bad quest designed by FFG. Right. Okay, so I'm gonna draw. So you've got Enchanted Stream and the Hill Troll, which is a total of three threat in the staging area. Right. So I'm going to put Nenya onto um, Gladriel, and then I'm going to put Olorien onto Celeborn. Now, Nenya has to go on Gladriel, but Olorien doesn't have to go on anybody but um, just a hero. So there's no reason to put it on Celeborn other than that's just my habit of doing that now the good thing is is that i'm able to use um i'm able to now quest through this hopefully without raising my threat and having to engage the hill troll i will see what happens um because i'm going to bring the weaver into play with this one and so now the weaver has two um, to will. So I'm awfully close here with my um, <laughs> with my with my threat, and my engagement cost of this troll. So yeah, but, generally speaking, I think most people try to avoid the hill troll until they get set up, so to start with a lower threat as possible when doing this quest. So let's get started. So I'm gonna quest, of course, with Celeborn. He he is like the all-purpose dude here, and he actually has the most willpower that I can commit to the quest. Usually, with Nenya, I can I can add willpower to another character, but um, so that's good. Uh, and then I'm gonna use the Weaver, even though I didn't have the ability. It was important. I think you would agree with me to have that ability. Um, to have the the questing out there even though i wasn't able to trigger a response definitely in this quest right um, so that you don't run your threat because of that troll right so i'm going to quest for five and then if i need to i'll use galadriel but i don't want to because i want to use her to keep my threat low i want to keep yep. my threat below there so there's f there's three here so five versus three, and then the banks of the Anduin. Five versus four, you are safe. So I make two. one progress here. And something must be said, you cannot progress from this stage while there's any hill troll in play. Right. So regardless of whether you get the eight quest points needed to clear the, um, to the river, you cannot progress if you've got that right. hill troll in play. And you can keep accumulating quest points onto the scenario onto the quest card like yes. i could have a hundred quest points on this quest card but 
as long as the Hill Troll's there, or, and there's two copies of the Hill Troll, we did an encounter card talk about this, is that, you know, if both of them come out, then you're really up the creek. Okay. No pun intended. Right. <laughs> yeah. You're up the Anduin <laughs> without a paddle. Okay. And then there's the falls of the Raros coming at you there. Um, anyways, so I think that even though I can't draw cards, like that two threat, I just want out and then get rid of it, and then we can go from there. I know that you would probably keep it in the stage. What's your thoughts here? Generally, I keep that in the stage area because I don't like cutting off my ability to draw. But in this situation, with five, with four threat already in the staging area, and basically questing for four without Gladriel, we need to get that threat out of there. So I'd agree that possibly taking that turn to quest through it would be a good idea. Right. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to go there. And now there's only two threat in the staging area. Yeah. Okay, I'm not going to optionally engage this guy. I have 29. This is 30. So I am going to trigger Galadriel, but like we learned in the Merkwood, <laughs> uh, I can't draw a card, but I definitely can lower my threat. Yeah. But I So I lower my threat, the end of the round happens, and I raise my threat by one. And I don't draw a card now either. So what you got sitting in your hand there, man? So I have Island Amid Perils, which is good. I have Orphan, and I have the um, the Galadon Archer. Now, the Galadon Archer may be an interesting card in this case, because I may be able to kind of... Because I don't have Gandalf. Sneak Attack Gandalf, which is everybody's favorite combo when they when I first played the game. <laughs> you find Sneak Attack Gandalf, you're like, oh! oh. You know, but I may be able to bring the Galadon Archer in and out of play. And by bringing the Galadon Archer in and out of play, that may help me out a little bit. Uh -huh. Yeah, the Galadon Archer would help out in this quest a fair bit. But it's... Not that I'm going to bring it in eight or nine times. <laughs> no. <laughs> but, Although you certainly could. I could. Um, yeah, when, when you don't get through a quest, when you want to set up your board really well, they call that turtling, because you're moving really slowly. But I do have this. I'm going to O'Lorien... I'm going to spend the two leadership resources to bring out Orphan. Now, Orphan is really good because Orphan has some good stats. And he's buffed by Celeborn. Buff meaning he, he his stats are added to. Now, because I know you've got that island of mid-perils right. in your hand, um, usually you wouldn't want to bring Orphan out without you, the target for his effect. But because of that island of mid perils, it kind of negates that. Right, and I can also lower my threat so I'm not perilously close to the hill troll. Yeah, the hill troll, which is kind of my hope here. Um, so, anyways, there's two out here. I'm going to quest for three, four, seven, and I'm up against two. Yeah, this guy doesn't um, exhaust a quest because of Galadriel's ability. Her, her, yeah, her ability. Reveal X additional encounter cards. X is the number of players in the game. That's generally not a bad card. If X. It is four player, but one player, yeah. it's really yeah. just a sir. It's just a card that say now replace it with something else. Two player, it can be a bit dicey. One player, it's just like, yeah. Yeah, one player, it's not a big deal. And then Treacherous Fog is the card that I just got, which is another treachery. It says each location in the stage area is plus one until the end of the turn. Then each player with a threat of 35 discards a card from his hand. I'm at 29, so I don't have to do the second part of that. But each location gets plus one tr um, threat. So that puts you at three threats in the staging area against seven. Seven. Four progress. So that's four progress. So this goes by. Then I'm that's able to make one two one more one. here. Um, and are you going to travel to the banks? I am going to travel to the banks of the Anduin. Now, one player, as long as there's no enemies out here. The Banks of the Anduin is kind of a neat card to have 
because it cycles back and forth. Yeah. So was, and it's also good because it doesn't have a um, shadow effect. So you also kind of know what the shadow effect is after we it goes back on the top. And then it's kind of an interesting thing going on here. Yeah, okay. You can basically manipulate the encounter net with that card. Right. And so now, normally I wouldn't do this, but I, I'm going to Island Amid Perils to bring Orifin back in my hand. And then I'm going to reduce my threat by three. Are you going to trigger Galadriel's ability as well? And then I'm going to trigger Galadriel's ability. So that's a card. So that's, I, I had to proxy, so that's quicker than sight. That cancels a shadow effect, which is fine. Okay, so then it also lowers threat, but then it raises threat. So now I'm going to ready everybody. And now we start back over here. And now I think this is the third beginning of the third round, right? That's correct. Okay. So now everybody gets a resource. We put this. So now we draw a card. And I get, I get Haldir. Which is a little frustrating because you like to tree people how you earn to play, but whatever. You can only do so much with this hand. Okay. So I think I'm going to Orifin. I'm going to use Olorian to Orifin. Bring Orifin into play. Now you know all about Orifin, right? Yeah, he's Haldia's brother. <laughs> Along with Rumil. <laughs> right. They're three the three brothers of the the Lorian Woods, right? Yeah, um in the books this is where the the entire fellowship of the ring, except for obviously Gandalf who fell, um actually met the three brothers um when they just entered Loch Lorian and they were hiding from the orcs. Right. The movies don't highlight um Orifin and Rumil as much as um, as Haldir, but nonetheless, they're they're in the books. Yes, they are in the books. Right, and they're the ones that spoke with the same voices to lure the um, orcs away. Right. Okay, so I'm going to quest. I'm going to quest for three. This guy quest for three again. He's buffed by Celeborn, so that's six, seven again. I'm going to quest for seven. Okay. For seven. Hey, look. <laughs> and a surge. So surge. Like... So that's. So now we get that. So now we have the Gladden Fields. So that puts you up to five threat in the staging area, and made that? Five, and I did seven. So that's two progress on the on the, the location. Now, are you going to trigger Galadriel's ability to clear that location out? I'm... Mm, okay. Do you think I should? Well, the thing is, if you don't clear out the um, banks of the Anduin uh, and you leave the Gladden Fields, that's an increase of three threat in the staging area because that Gladden Fields is nasty now. Yeah, mitigating the threat in the staging area at the beginning of the game, I think, is important. So I think you're right. And I I knew that my threat was low, but not, you know, I, I forgot. So even if I do it, it's fine. So I'm going to do four now. So I do four more because she adds her willpower to another person. So that's one. That goes back on the top of the deck. So now I know what the next card coming off is. And then we do three more here. So I'm, I've done a total of six progress on the, on the act, on the on the current quest. Now I'm going to play. I'm going to travel to the Gladden Fields, which has a nasty forced effect. When the Gladden Fields is the active location, each player must raise his threat by an additional point during the regret phase. Right. And then, what's the one? No, I, I was just going to get rid of the, the Eastern Crows. Um, 
I was actually going to engage the Eastern Crows. Are you sure you want to engage the Eastern Crows? Because of the fact that um, you could leave the Eastern Crows in there. You could then drop in um, the Galadon Archer, which... Right, um, well, I was still going to I was still gonna Galadon Archer him into play. But that way you still keep the Banks of the Anduin as the top card of the encounter deck. Oh, that's right. See, this is why doing this this way is great. Okay, so I'm going to leave him here. I'm going to drop in the Galadon Archer, like you said, okay, for two as my combat action. I'm going to do the damage to the Hill Troll. Right? Really on the hill troll, don't you want to get rid of the um No because if I, that, if I do that, that I've defeated it and it has to get shuffled back into the So that's yeah. that's what we just decided to not do. Yeah. Okay. So and I can cancel a shadow effect if I need to with well, that. What I thought you were going to do was engage the bats and that way the banks would become the shadow guard. But I forgot the um but shuffle into the encounter deck once they're defeated. Right. Although you could just leave them around and use them as a defender. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the bats aren't horrible, but I know I have a one-threat location coming off the top wow. of the deck. So I'm going to draw a card. Hey, look. This is good. This is what I was saying about the... Um, about this deck is now, you know, now we're building up ranged characters, and if Rumil comes out, I can engage the troll, and maybe I can kill the troll before it, it takes a thwack at me. So, I don't know. Let's see what happens here. Okay, so I'm going to have three, six. That's really all I need to do is six, right? Yeah, so three. I'm not going to play any any of these guys. So three, four, five, six. Okay. Yeah. So this comes off. So that's three against... It's three. Oh, do you remember a raise your threat by an additional point to the Gladden Fields? I did not. Okay. So that's three, and that gets rid of the Gladden Fields. This goes in the victory display. So the victory display I'll put above my discard, the encounter discard pile. And at this point in the game, victory display means it's removed from the um, deck pool. Right. So that means when I reshuffle, or if I have to reshuffle, I don't have to reshuffle this back into the game. In later quests, there is cards that will um, require you to remove cards from the victory display and add them to the staging area or back into the deck. But at this point in time, in the life of the game, that wasn't a thing. <laughs> so now I'm going to use O'Lorien to reduce the cost of the, the second Galadon Archer by one. And then I'm going to spend one to bring him out. And so now I've done two damage to the Hill Troll. And so that's just a total of another seven damage you needed on him to kill. Right. Not including these three defense. Right, if I can get seven more damage on him, I'm good. So now I'm going to use Galadriel's ability to draw a card, which is the minstrel. I got the minstrel, which will, which may be good at this point. Okay. And then I draw a card at the beginning of my turn, which is a second minstrel, which is a little frustrating, but that's okay. So there's that. And then we're two here. But I have Nenya. So Nenya, it's Nenya business. Nenya allows me to use this here. One, two, three, four, five. So now what is it? Island Amid Perils or Test of Will? Uh, well, knowing this encounter deck and knowing that your threat is lower than 30, there is only one card that could do you some serious damage, which is Pursued by Shadow. But again, knowing your 
what your deck runs like, I'd say go for an Island of Mid Perils. And then I can bring the Galadon Archer in my hand, and then I can replay him. Yeah, or if we get the nasty pursuit by Shadow, you could bring Orphan back and drop your threat by three again. Right. Because pursuit by um, Shadow, each player raises threat by one, but each character he controls that is not currently committed to the quest. <laughs> that is not committed to the quest. Yeah. And that was another thing that happened to me at the beginning of the game when I first was learning. Committed to the quest doesn't mean exhausted, it just means committed to the quest. So committed to the quest and exhausting are two different are two different game actions. So eh. you never have sloppy cards when you're when you're on OCTGN, right? No, you don't. But then again, you don't have the same feel for the cards. Right. Okay. So now I'm in a quest. Now this guy doesn't exhaust a quest, but I can quest for two with him because of Celeborn and Galadriel. So that's five. And I want to make sure I get through this. So there's six, eight. And I only have two in the staging area, so this is good. Here comes something. Pretty... <laughs> what were you saying? So by shadow. So what does this do? Um. It increases your threat by one for each character currently not not currently committed to the quest. So one, two, three, four. So I have to raise my threat by four. So what are you threatening at there? Thirty-two. Right, and then if you play your island of mid perils, that'll drop by three if you bring back orphan. Well watch what I'm gonna do here. Um well Let's resolve the quest. Yeah. So, two. I quested for eight. So that's two, five. This goes back to the top of the deck, right? Yeah. Okay, five. And then I do. So I now have more quest points on the thing here. So now here's, here's I think, kind of the gamey situation here. There's a travel phase window in which this happens prior. To the and there's also a, an action window at the end of the quest phase. Yeah. Quest phase. So I think I'm going to lower my threat by one and trigger Galadriel's ability. So I get the Elven King. Okay. And so now I lower my threat by one. Right? Yeah. And now I'm going to play Island Amid Perils to bring a Galadon Archer back into my hand. And now I'm at 29. Right? Yep. So now, this is, so now I'm going to, um, I don't travel. I can optionally engage this guy. I'm done having him in the staging area. Okay, I'm going to deal with a shadow card. Now, that's no shadow there. Okay. But I'm also going to spend the two, Thranduil's ability to put him into play. And now do th another damage in there, right? Yeah. So I'm just kind of tinking away at the, at the, at the hill troll. Eventually, I'm probably going to have to engage it, but... I don't want to turtle too much through this quest. <laughs> okay. So now I have to defend this guy. I'm going to defend it with Thranduil. Now it would be really cool if I could use um, Quicker Than Sight, but this doesn't have a shadow card, so... So that would be useless. <laughs> right. And so... Um, so nothing, no damage to Thranduil. So now I'm going to use this guy to kill. So now this goes, gets shuffled into the encounter deck. So what do you think? Do you think I did the right thing? It worked. I mean, me personally, I would have probably brought back Orphan so that way you could have reduced your threat by essentially four. And kept that 
still trying to be a little bit longer, but your wee also worked. Okay. So I'm, that... I'm guessing it's just a difference in player styles for me and you. <laughs> okay, so now, raise my threat, I draw a card. So now I get a test of will, so that's a good... So now I ready... Well, was that a turn ago? <laughs> yeah, right? So now I ready everybody. And now I get this here. Okay, so these guys are all in play. So now I'm going to bring out another minstrel. One, two, three, four, five. And so I re so I have Nath Guide, Galleon, Sylvan Tracker, and Nenya. So the only event card that I got was Tree People. So I'll tree I'll bring Tree People back into my hand. And then you know what I'm gonna do? Well I have to shuffle. So what would you do? Um what would I do with the cards in your hand? So I got tree people. Yeah. How would you use this? I know what I'm going to do, but um, I would probably wait until the uh, in the quest phase before triggering three people and see what's actually coming. I'm going to trigger three people now. All right. And I'm going to bring a Galaton Archer back into my hand, right? Okay. And then one, two, three, four, five. But hope for not a whiff. Oh, look. And then I get a Sylvan Tracker. Okay, so that that just came into play. So these two guys just came into play. And that's important for this hand. Or for this particular thing. Because... Again, Galadriel's ability. Okay. So I'm going to keep the one for Test of Will. Oh, I'm going to play Elven King. Oh, yes. That's awesome. I'm going to play one. Elven King is one. I'm going to put it on Celeborn. Sometimes you want two to be able to... Def Sometimes you want two defenses for Thranduil. But I think in this case we're okay. Yeah, and just to let you know, Dave, there are two copies of Sue by Shadow in this encounter set. Oh, okay, great. So it's a good job that you managed to get a hold of that uh, test as well. Right. Okay, so then I'm going to do, I'm going to quest for three, five, seven. Not because of anything other than these guys don't exhaust to commit to the quest. So now we do this. Evil Storm. Deal one damage to each character control with a threat of 35 or higher. I do not have threat 35 or higher. So I did so I committed for seven. There's one here. So I'm now up to 15 in the on the current quest. Now Grant, I don't think there are any cards that allow you to reduce the amount of quest progress you've made on the current quest in this deck. Actually, there is. Oh, there is? Despair. Remove four progress tokens from the quest current quest card. Okay. If there are fewer than four progress tokens on this quest card, remove all progress tokens from the quest. Right. Okie doke. I stand corrected. Okay, so now here's what I'm going to do. Okay, before I'm going to use Galadriel's ability to lower my threat by one, avoid the hill troll, draw a card, Legolas, that's a good card to have. Okay, now, I don't have to engage, so I'm going to bring out this Galadon Archer, I'm going to spend two for him, I'm going to do one point damage, and then I'm going to use the Elven King to ready this guy to bring this Galadon Archer back into my hand. And you kind of see where I'm going with this. <laughs> it's all about that Galadon Archer. Because <laughs> I don't have Rumil yet. If I had Rumil, I would be able to... I think at this point, I have enough 
to be able to uh, kill him. But nonetheless, so I don't have to engage this guy, draw a card, Nenya. Okay, so now this goes up by one at the end of this. Ready, everybody? So this is the slow, painful. This is the turtling David didn't want to do. Right, exactly right. Okay. So I can't really do anything yet. I don't have any cards to play. They're all out of sphere. David, do you have a quicker than sight in your hand? I do have a quicker than sight in my hand. Right. Again, we had to proxy because I'm waiting on the United States Postal Service to. Yeah, I'm just thinking that um, Thrandwell could take one attack from the hill troll. Yeah, he can. He can get thumped by the hill troll. We can probably yeah. do that this turn. Yeah, I was just thinking since we got that silver cracker out. Right. Okay, so, anyways, I'm going to quest for three. Okay. No, four, six. Deal two damage to a character committed to the quest. Rand will see, um, Caliborn seems like an ideal target for that. Yep. Okay. So I always put damage on the picture and, and um... So anyways. So that's... Two, three. I quested for six. So that's three more here. So I'm at 18. Okay. Now, again, before the end of the round, I'm going to trigger... Wait, you don't have the end of the round? Um, or not end of the round, end of the, end of the quest phase. Right? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to... Oh, I, I get a weaver. Okay. So that lowers my threat. 29. Okay, I'm going to use, again... Thranduil's ability, the beginning of, uh, sorry, so I have to engage this guy. I'm going to leave him up in the staging area again. Deal the, this. Use Thranduil's ability. Pay the one. Bring out a Galadon Archer. We're now five. You know what's really funny? I, I feel like now I have to commit to this. You know what I mean? Like I have to. <laughs> I have to kill. I have to kill him with the, with the Gal Galadon archers now. Okay. So what's this say? It says remove one progress from the current quest. Okay. Now, I don't necessarily hate that shadow effect, but I'm going to use quicker than sight to cancel it. Uh, I was defending with Thranduil, of course. That way I can bring this guy back into my hand. You see, I would have kept a hold of that for the that quick of insight for the hill troll. <laughs> right. Well we just Okay. So I'm gonna say that this is the one that's in play. This is the one that I just brought into play. Doesn't really yeah, matter. Right. right? And so Thranduil doesn't take any damage, so I'm going to do three damage to this guy and kill it. Okay, so now I'm going to raise my threat by... <laughs> this probably makes really good good watching, right? You've got to watch this at double speed in order to be <laughs> engaged at this. All right, so everybody readies. I could have Elven Kinged the other one back to my hand. Oh, look, guess what I drew? Quicker than sight. Good, good. So that, that helps. So everybody gets, because I readied, this guy goes to one. So he gets one. There's three, two. <laughs> okay. So 
I'm going to play O Lorien. And then I'm going to bring Haldir out into play. <laughs> Four, three. Now that leaves me open for the test of will, but to not be able to use it, but whatever. Okay, so now I'm going to do three. I'm going to quest for three, five, six. This Haldir doesn't exhaust the committed quest. Okay, six against one. Six against one. And there's despair. I'm so glad you didn't get that as a shadow card. <laughs> <laughs> right. It basically mitigates the defense of the character. Right, so I'm down to 14. And this is why it's always good, I think, to keep... Even even though I've gone through and, and pretty much beat this quest, this stage of the quest, I think this is what makes it good to kind of just keep always adding threat, or adding... Doing all the right things. Keep adding progress and things like that in case something yeah. like that comes up. Okay, so now I'm going to trigger her ability. I'm going to draw... Oh, look, I draw another Haldir. But that lowers this to 29. I'm going to trigger Thranduil's ability. Look, 6. Right, now are you going to trigger um, the Elven King? To bring a Galadon Archer into, back into my hand? A Galadon Archer or a Minstrel or a Weaver. All three would serve, but if you did that, you would lose the healing from the Sylvan Tracker on Calibor. Right. Well, that's the thing. I, I don't think it matters right now. No, I don't think so either. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use the, the Elven King to bring the Galadon Archer to try to see if I can do this. So now I'm going to ready everything. And I can't because the Elven King was used to ready Celeborn. It doesn't trigger the Galadon or, or the, the Sylvan Trackers thing. Okay. So we have two of the three brothers out. This would be a great time to see the third brother, don't you think? Totally. Because then I can bring him into play. I can gauge and then Come on, Rumel. <laughs> and bearing in mind, this is not stage you're seeing it live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're seeing what we see right when it happens. Okay, so this this really helps out. Okay. So I need three to bring Rumel out, and I have six. Okay, so I can... It doesn't really matter. I'm going to leave all these cards in my hand. I'm going to quest for three. I'll quest for three, four, five, six. These guys don't do much. Okay? I'm going to quest for six again. Good thing. <laughs> Guess what I have? A test of will. Right. So I'm going to test of will that. And bear in mind, if that it went off, David will lose half his willpower. <laughs> yeah. Um, this would, these guys would die. Um, my Galadon are, it's, the, the problem, the Galadon, it's oh, these guys wouldn't die. Character. No, these guys wouldn't die. Oh, yeah, each exhausted character. Yeah, the problem with this deck, and this is the one problem with this deck that I found, is that they're really squishy. So when this comes out, you end up with bad stuff. So I did Six against one, so that's five more. So I'm at um, 19. Okay. So now I'm going to engage the troll, put a card into play, and this is and this is that secondary theme of the deck. So I'm going to use O Lorien. And I'm going to pay three to bring Rumel out. I guess it doesn't matter from where I bring it. And so Rumel does X damage when I pay for him to anything that's engaged with me. And so because he's into play, this guy gets damaged. He takes one, two, three, four damaged because I have four ranged characters. 
And then, so this guy takes four damage and he dies. Before he even attacks. And that's direct damage, it doesn't matter about the target's defense. Oh, look at what the shadow card was. Not that it's a bad shadow, but that's, I think there's only two copies of the Necromancer's Reach in there. Three. Oh, there's the third one. Okay, so... That means immediately we get through there, and then we get through some of this. And now this has a funny thing. So what? Describe this while I go through the the state. The what I'm going to do here. Right. Okay. So you reveal an additional card from the encounter deck each quest phase. However, you do not make encounter engagement checks against during the encounter phase. Um, you. And you can, but each player may still optionally engage one enemy each encounter phase. So you can still optionally engage, but you do not um, mandatorily engage. Right. So, you, of your threat. right. so one player, this isn't horrible. It's actually kind of normal. But when you're playing four player and you have to four off the encounter deck, it's wild. Well, okay. Well, it's not four off the encounter deck. It's five off the encounter deck. If in, in a four oh, right, because you're revealing one additional card per. Yeah, player. it's not. It's not one per player. One additional card per player, right. which is kind of scary at four player games. <laughs> right. Okay, so um, I'm going to put the weaver into play. That puts this test of will back in there to draw. But basically, I want to I want to quest for sixteen here. I want to try to quest through this as much as I can. Right. Just bear in mind the um, when revealed effect of um, ambush on the show. Of what? Um, quest phase three. Everything comes down and attacks me. Um, you reveal two additional card encounter cards per player. So yeah. if you're questing through, you're going to have four cards in that staging area, which could potentially come down and destroy you. Right. Which, I, okay. I'm okay with that. Okay. <laughs> just just giving you yep. a fair warning. Okay. But I'm already through. Right. So now I have to quest. I'm in the quest phase, right? Okay. So this is two, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 11, 13, 15. And then I'm going to... Oh, dang it. Yeah. I... Okay, 15. Okay, two cards against the encounter deck. So there's the East Bite. Which is one threat. And then Evil Storm. Which does nothing against your current threat. Nothing against me, because I'm at 30. So, 15 versus 1. That's 14. It's 14. Then use Galadriel. Oh, uh, yeah, you did reveal the second card, yeah. Like... Yep. Okay. So that's so that gets through this. Yep. And then you need to reveal two more cards from the... And then it says, when revealed... Reveal two encounter cards per player, then add them to the staging area. Yep, and then this one also has a special effect after it's done. It says skip the staging step of the quest phase for the remainder of the game. Once there are no enemies in play, the players have won the game. Right, so now all I have to do is kill this thing. Right, so, but you've still, now you've got the travel phase, mate, so where do you want right. to travel to? So I'm gonna, well, I have to travel so to, the to the East Bite. East Bite, yeah, that's right. Okay, now this guy, because he's the only enemy in the staging area, I can engage him. Yeah. I'm wondering if there's something creative that I can do. There is. Watch what I'm going to do. Okay, I'm going to use Elven King to ready him, but I'm going to bring Rumil back to my... And then you're going to use Rumil to... Yeah, I mean, destroy. and then, then now it's the engagement phase i'll engage him deal it a shadow card 
Right. Well, technically, you could have killed it in the staging area with room milk, can't you? No, it's yeah. only things that are. The Caladon Archer engages anything not engaged with you, or attacks uh, anything not engaged. engaged. And room milk, you have to be engaged with it. Right. Okay, and so yeah, now right. I'm going to trigger um, Olorien, pay three for room milk, and kill this before any sort of nasty shadow card goes off. That is a nasty shadow Which card. Which is a nasty shadow card. And so now this goes on, and so, and now you've won the game. And now we've won it because there are no enemies left in play. There is zero progress to make on um, ambush on the show. Although it wasn't really an ambush; it was one enemy. <laughs> right. And that has been the easiest game of um, this quest I have seen. <laughs> Yeah, I mean that's the that's the beauty of the deck. I mean, maybe I got a couple of good draws, but we were able to mitigate everything that came out in that. You know, like there was nothing that seemed to do anything nasty to me. No. You know, the Galadon Archer kind of continually hitting the the Hill Troll for one. You know, maybe if we would have gotten a second Hill Troll, that would have been Yeah, and I think if we drawn that second pursuit by Shadow it could have done made that crawl engage up. Right. But there it is. I mean that's the that's the beauty. so at the very end people got a chance to see what that slippery sylvan does. You know, bring in, bring out, bring in, bring out. Yeah. So this isn't necessarily the best quest to do it, but again, it's the one we're trying to do the one deck playthrough, so yep. and what's the next quest for them, David? <laughs> the next <laughs> escape from Dolador. <laughs> and how many times have you beat that quest, David? How many times have I beaten it? Yeah. Once. <laughs> how many times have I played it? <laughs> this many with with a lot of zeros there. <laughs> but I just beat it recently with this deck. So, and that was my whole thing about about the quest is that I never wanted to play the quest and play you know design a deck just to beat that that quest so um and i i may sideboard three sneak attacks for this quest but that's it yeah um, which is well within the rules i think that's, the sideboard has been an addition since the game came out it wasn't um conceived at the time of the game but a sideboard all it basically allows you to do is at the beginning of the, of the game, instead of just having your main deck, you can then say, right, well, I want to take these out of my main deck and I'm going to switch it around with these ones, but still keeping the core element of your deck the same. Right, and all I'm doing in this case is I'm just going to add the three sneak attacks. Um, Maybe I'll try it once without the sneak attacks, and then maybe I'll try it again with the well, sneak attacks. I don't know. Well, let's. I think we should try it without the sneak attacks in first to see how well it works. Right. Because of the fact that's what we're going without. We're not doing a run with the sneak attack in. Right. But if we lose that one, then yes, I say we. If we're struggling to do a quest and need to get a, something off, then yes. Um, we do another. If we feel it, then we do another run, and we allow the sideboard usage. What do you think? Yeah, that's fine. Well, I guess we'll talk about that when we do our next playthrough. Have a great day, everybody. And if you're interested in finding this or any of our back episodes of Card Talk, feel free to search YouTube, where you can find our flagship video episodes with the username Card Talk 2018, or you can search the RSS feed Card Talk 2018.libsyn.org for our extended audio versions of our podcast, or you can find us on Facebook at Card Talk 2018. And if you have any questions for Grant or myself or for both of us, feel free to email us at cardtalk2018 at gmail.com.